Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Right, the puzzle I have for you today is this gorgeous, cheery, vivid, lovely bluebird puzzle. It's got artwork by Amy Stewart and it's called A Night at the Circus. This puzzle has so much going on in the image and well, circuses do tend to be like that, but wow, there is a lot to puzzle here. Every circus act you can imagine is represented and there's more animals in it than I can count. And all of it is imbued with these beautiful, bold, bright colours. It's a truly happy and cheery image and I really can't wait to start piecing it together for you. Now, this puzzle is 4,000 pieces and I actually bought it initially to celebrate the 4,000 subscriber milestone on my channel. Before I really had the chance to come down from the high of that awesome event, Event, I was fast approaching 5,000 subscribers and I still hadn't done this puzzle yet. <laughs> so this video is in the nature of a celebratory video, but it's a little late after the 4,000 subscriber milestone. However, I do hope you enjoy it all the same. <laughs> Before I start it, and on the subject of landmark events on the channel, I hope you don't mind if I pause here for a brief moment to let you know about some other news. If you haven't seen my recent video on this, you may not know that I have recently activated channel memberships and also created a Patreon for Vicky Makes and Builds. If you decided to join one of the levels of membership, of which there are two, either on YouTube or on Patreon, your small monthly subscription would go a long way to make this channel my primary occupation and to reinvest in the best tools that I can to create the best content that I can make. I truly appreciate all of your support already. It's really been awesome how much you've helped me to grow this channel so much. And obviously there is absolutely no obligation for you to join. You'll still get all of the great stuff on my main channel that I have always provided. But if you did decide to join, you'll get access to exclusive members only content. I'll give you puzzle progress updates, a first look at new puzzles I receive as I receive them. They'll come in the form of photographs and also footage. I'll do wee videos for you. And for the higher level tier, I will also include one extra bonus video per month on uh, one of my puzzle builds. There is actually one up there already. So if you joined today, for example, it is there waiting for you. In that video, I built the beautiful Clementoni Colour Boom Stairs puzzle. So you can go along and enjoy that. And there's also a bunch of posts as well. So there's already plenty for you to sink your teeth into. I want to give a big shout out and thank you just now to all of those who have already joined either a YouTube membership or my Patreon. I truly do appreciate that. So thank you so much. And if you would like to join them as well, here is how you do it. There are two links in the description below. One is for YouTube memberships and one is for Patreon. The two platforms have the same content on them. So it's up to you which you want to pick, but just a couple of things to note before you decide on that. Firstly, Patreon charge less in fees uh, to the creator. So if you decided to join Patreon, more of your membership subscription money will come to me because they don't charge quite as much as YouTube do. But the other thing to note is that Patreon and YouTube convert the currency slightly differently. And so if you joined on Patreon, depending on what country you're in, you may end up paying slightly more than you would on YouTube. So just wanted to be completely transparent about that. There's some minor differences. So it's up to you which one you choose. As I said, you would get the exact same content on either one. And either way, I truly do appreciate all of your love and support. That was all I had to say. Thank you so much for listening. And now let's get on with this beautiful A Night at the Circus puzzle. Okay, here it is. I'm going to take the cellophane off first. Oh, this is proving difficult. Oh, there we go. I've got an in. Oh, this puzzle is so bright. I really love the colors. So much detail as well. Okay, so cellophane is off. And we're gonna have a wee look at the pieces and the box because it's the first time I've done a bluebird puzzle on the channel. It's a full image apart from this tiny little bit here where it says 4,000. It covers a little bit of the back of this elephant. But aside from that, it's a full image. 
We've got the name of the brand and the name of the puzzle, A Night at the Circus. I'm going to take the lid off and I will put it there. Okay, it's a nice deep box. I like that. So like it's not a hugely wide box, but it is deep so it fits all the pieces in. Uh, oh, it's in two bags. Oh no, wait, it's not. Oh, it is. Oh, I thought it was just a big long bag folded over there for a second, but it's not. It's two bags joined together. Oh my goodness, I had no idea that this puzzle was divided into two bags. Well, there's like a little perforated tear strip down the middle. So I'm going to carefully try and pull them apart. Pulls apart quite easily, actually. Hold on. It goes until you get to the middle. There. Right, so I'm a little bit taken aback by this because I just thought this was all 4,000 pieces in one bag. I did not realise it was going to be separated into two. I assume that each bag represents a different section of the puzzle, but there doesn't appear to be any identifying markings on the bag, apart from just a recycling logo. Uh, unless I'm just not seeing it. It's hard, kind of hard to tell when there's pieces in the bag. But, I mean, it, I just want to know really for curiosity's sake, because I'm going to mix the pieces anyway. I kind of came into this thinking that I would, um, you know, be doing a full 4,000 pieces in one. So I will mix the pieces, but I'm just intrigued because I wasn't expecting it. I'll have a quick look. There's no there's no sheet or anything in the box. Nothing around the sides. And on the back it just talks about bluebirds ranges of puzzles. So there's nothing there. And there's nothing on the outside of the lid either. If I look at the pieces themselves, there's a piece there that looks like a giraffe. And the giraffes are on the right hand side of the picture. So I'm assuming, I mean, assuming that the puzzle is cut in half vertically, then I'm assuming this would be the right side and this would be the left. So there would be elephant pieces, like there's some obvious elephant pieces there. So I'm assuming this is the left and this is the right. So I guess if you buy a 4,000 piece bluebird puzzle, and you want to do it in smaller sections, I guess that's what they do. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case with all of them, but it is with this one. So there we go. I've learned something new about it already, but I will be mixing these pieces up. Okay, so we're in the first bag. And it looks like there's a fair amount of dust dropping pieces on the floor already. Literally jumped out of the box. Right. So just give them all a wee rummage. Spread them out a bit. And then the second bag is going in just now. And here we have it now. I can see the bags better now there's no pieces in, but I still see no other information aside from the recycling logos. So I'm a little stumped by that. Not sure how you're supposed to know apart from just identifying the pieces. We've got all standard shapes from the looks of things. I see oh, some, this one stuck together. It's not a good start, is it? So I see Two ins, two outs on adjacent sides, two ins, two outs on opposite sides, three outs, one in, three ins, one out. Obviously there are edge pieces. Oh, that one's got four outs. I'm assuming there will be ones with four ins as well. I can't see any just at the moment. So you've got the whole variety of standard shapes, which is good. And there appears to be some variety within the shapes themselves. 
like for example that one's quite a lot bigger than that one even though it's the same kind of overall shape and that one as well so yeah so uh, happy with the shapes we've also got the normal cardboard backing on the pieces these pieces are they're they're a decent thickness but i wouldn't say i wouldn't call them chunky they're sort of more on the thin side of the spectrum but they're not too bad and look to be quite matte they've got a little bit of a woven finish to them so that's really nice i like that and the quality of the image on the pieces seems to be really clear and bright I've got lovely bright vivid blue on that piece got some lovely kind of pinks on that piece so i think the colors will be true to the image which is great and they look lovely these pieces they look really nice so i'm looking forward to making a start on this puzzle and yeah i'm definitely going to sort it I, I tend to sort all my larger puzzles and 4,000 pieces to me would constitute a large puzzle so i'm going to start by sorting I hope that it's easily sortable. There does appear to be lots of kind of sorting categories I can divide into. Giraffe, for example. Stripes on the zebra. Stripes on the tent. That kind of thing. There might be a lot of sorted piles because there's so much detail in this puzzle. But that's okay. We'll see how it goes. I'll take my time with it and just try and get a nice detailed sort done and make this build so satisfying but yeah i really cannot wait i can't wait it's gonna be so much fun sorting's done yay <laughs> i've done a good sort with this i think i'm pleased with the sort i did do my usual thing and get really bored part way through and it was really tempting just to start putting it together but i want to start this on the table and i wouldn't really have had enough space to start putting it together at the same time as sorting so i just kind of carried on till the end i just can't wait to, to start this puzzle i think that's the thing i think that's the case with most of these puzzles that i do that i just can't wait to get through it so i can start it but particularly this one because it looks like so much fun anyway right okay so i've been a little bit strategic with this because i've figured out how i want to build it i think so this box here i have categorized as animal pieces so we've got here this i think is the the two pandas and also the polar bear so you've got two pandas down there and you've got the polar bear in the middle there. Then here you've got the giraffes. That's there. I, I separated this at first, not really knowing what it was, but I put it beside the giraffes because these are actually, there's like a rough around the giraffe's neck just there. And that's what that is. So that's beside the giraffe pile. That's the, the multicolored zebra. This one is quite miscellaneous, but it's, it's animal pieces miscellaneous. So there will be elephant, horse, tiger possibly the kangaroos that are up there might possibly be in there i think we might have some sea lions perhaps in there there's another one there so that's sort of animal pieces but it, it's more of a miscellaneous pile of animal pieces that is the little cannon on the right hand side it's purple with yellow stars on it so that's just above the zebra that's the reason i put that there because it goes right next to the zebra so that's that box over here these are pieces of popcorn boxes this is a very large pile it's red pieces so that's a more miscellaneous pile it's not kind of a feature specific pile 
it's red pieces so it's likely to be one I'll come to last or that I'll dip in and out of throughout the puzzle. Same with that one that's green pieces, that's miscellaneous. I just don't really know quite what they are or, or there weren't enough pieces maybe to make a pile out of it so a lot of the miscellaneous ones went in there. This is another miscellaneous colour pile, this is pinks and purples. Another miscellaneous colour pile, that one's kind of peachy colours. Although I think a lot of the pieces in here will be areas of the floor. You can see kind of beigey, creamy, sort of vaguely pink areas of the floor there. And I think a lot of those pieces might be that. This is a smaller one, but this is yellow pieces. This is more orangey coloured pieces. So you've got quite a lot of piles that are miscellaneous in terms of colour so that meaning that basically the pieces in them will be scattered across the puzzle. We've got edge pieces here. This box is the other one that's feature specific and this is all piles of pieces that are situated at the top of the puzzle so there's a lot of sky in here. So what we've got here is this one here is this here. They were really distinctive, easy to pick out. Um, I don't know what it is, like a Catherine wheel or something like that. But anyway, that's those pieces there. Those pieces are pieces with fireworks on. This pile is pieces with the big wheel just there. This is sky pieces, but these pieces tended to be a lot darker, like dark purples, dark blues. So sky, but darker areas of sky. This is the circus sign. So this, this here, and this is circus tent pieces, which again were quite distinctive because they're stripy. There may be some circus tent pieces over in the red pile, but I've got I've got a fair few in here, I think. This one is miscellaneous. This is just blue pieces. There might be some sky in here, and there'll be blue from all over the, the puzzle. So what my plan is with this puzzle is I'm going to start it on the table, before I move over to the board and I'm going to try and do a bit of a top-down approach with it because a lot of the feature specific piles are at the top of the puzzle so you know like this wheel here the circus tent the fireworks the big wheel the giraffes up at the top of the puzzle a lot of the piles that I've got that are specifically one bit of the puzzle tend to be situated at the top and I think as I'm building that up I can dip in and out of other piles, like when I'm building the circus tent, I can dip in and out of the red pieces. When I'm doing the sky, I can dip in and out of the blue. And all being well, just get those other miscellaneous piles down a bit as I work my way down the puzzle. Might be a little bit of building in from the edge as well. The zebra ought to be fairly easy to put together. Possibly the pandas and the little cannon above the zebra. So I, I'm going to start at the top with this puzzle. So I'll, I'll do the edge and I'll... I'll sort of focus on the top edge and building down from that and then when I move it over to the board I can put the whole edge together and put everything in place. Any little floaty bits that I've managed to put together I can move across to the board and then just fill in the gaps from there but I can't wait to get started on this. These pieces just look so colourful and lovely and I really can't wait to put this puzzle together so yeah here goes.
Okay, so the circus tent has come together really well and I have also done most of that giraffe. Now, a lot of these sections of pieces that I'm building <laughs> will have kind of gaps in them by the end because there's just like always something else within that particular space. So here, for example, you've got two kangaroos flying across it and up here at the tent, you've got what looks like a lemur. You've got like in the sky, there's a monkey. So this is why it gets quite gappy because you know, like with these balloons, for example, they will be in other piles of pieces. But, you know, for the most part, the sections are together. And the same thing really has happened with the tent and also with the giraffe. I've got a few tent pieces left, but I'm not able to fit them in just yet. So what I am going to do next is there is a blue section here just beneath the circus sign. And that is this here where the, the curtains are kind of open. And I have seen those pieces in my batch of miscellaneous blue pieces. And having already kind of delved into there already, I think I could probably pick these out fairly easily. You've also got this tiger, which I think I could pick out quite easily from the batch of animal pieces. So I'm gonna, gonna try and do that and hopefully maybe get a few more bits of the tent in on this side. And then what I'm going to do next is, after that, I'm going to make a start on the elephant. Now, I have already gone through the animal pieces and I've pulled out a pile of what I think are elephant pieces. But again, the elephant has some blue on it and some red. And I think if I delve into the red pile and the blue pile, I can also get together a lot of this kind of area so that I can piece together this elephant and try and fill that in a little bit. So still in keeping with the kind of top down process, going to get on with these curtains, the tiger and the elephant. Be delving into a lot of the miscellaneous piles, but hopefully should be able to get those together. Okay, so the puzzle is progressing well. As you can see, it's still coming together from the top downwards. So we've got this giraffe is filled out nicely. There's a little bit of a gap there where he's got like a blanket on his back. And the wee opening in the front of the tent has filled out quite nicely. We've got a little bit of the tiger there that's jumping through a hoop. And what I'm really pleased about is that I've managed to get together a good bit of this elephant. Doesn't he look lovely? Oh, I love I love the elephant. Anyway, <laughs> so it really is progressing really well. And it feels like it's coming together quickly too. But it may, may just be because it's just really enjoyable. <laughs> and time flies when you're having fun. So just to explain a couple of other bits that have come together. So this little bit here is some red pieces I pulled out because I thought that they were a part of the elephant's blanket and his wee hat there so I actually thought they were a part of that with it being red and yellow but it turned out they weren't they are actually this chap's pair of trousers down here so that's just a little bit that's come together this hat here again thought it might be a bit of the decoration on the elephant similar to that bit there but it isn't that is actually the hat of the polar bear in the middle so that actually should go somewhere around here but i put it over there because at the time i was working on the tent and things and it was kind of 
uh, there were pieces in the way. So anyway, that's where that roughly goes. And these pieces here, I probably could put together, but I haven't yet. Again, these are pieces I pulled out thinking it was a bit of the elephant. It's got this kind of, these kind of lines, which is a similar texture to the elephant, but this actually is the sea lion. Sea lion, I think it is, down at the bottom here. And he's wearing like a, br a blue collar. So that's what that is there. So I've just lined those up ready and I'll put those together at some point soon. So there are little bits coming together in other parts of the puzzle now. And I think I'm going to kind of move on to that as a strategy now, because what I'm, what's happened is I've mostly used up the piles that are sort of feature specific in the puzzle. So, uh, you know, so I've done the Ferris wheel, I've done the Catherine wheel, I've done the tent, I've done the circus sign, I've done the giraffe and so on and so forth. There aren't that many of those piles left. So, and the other piles are kind of generic colour piles, greens and yellows and oranges and reds and things. So just in a, in a bid to kind of try and get the piles down and get this puzzle coming together at a, a good pace like it is at the moment, I'm going to tackle some of these other piles from elsewhere in the puzzle. So these are the zebra pieces. Now you can just see a little bit of the edge of the zebra there. And so I'm hopeful I can put those together pretty quick and attach that to the edge. There's also pieces here that belong to this cannon here, right above the zebra. So I'm going to put those pieces together. And once I've done that, I'm going to move over to this pile here, which is the green pieces. Really what I hope to do with the greens is start to put together some of these grassy areas here, just around where the giraffe is and also around where this elephant is. There's a little bit there as well. And while I'm at it, maybe just put together other bits of green, like the floor, this monkey's umbrella here, a little bit of green there. There's other green bits, like the, this person coming out of the cannon, which should attach nicely, hopefully, to the giraffe. And then there's like gaps at the top where there'll be green pieces, like that balloon there. And there's, a, oh, there's another balloon there, look, that's green. So it'll be good just to gap fill a little bit as well. So the puzzle, I suspect, will become a little bit bitty now as it comes together. But I'm approaching the halfway mark. And as I say, I've done a lot of the feature specific piles of, of pieces now. So I'm going to just change my tack a little bit, tackle some of the other piles. And then, yeah, I'm not sure after that. We'll just take it from there, see how it goes. So pretty.
Okay, that is me just over halfway through this puzzle and I have enjoyed this puzzle so much that it feels like it's just flown by. There's just so much to love about this puzzle. The colours, the details, the sheer plethora of different features in it, the quality of Bluebird. Now this is the first Bluebird puzzle that I have attempted and I have not been disappointed at all. The finish on the pieces is right up my street. The variety in the shapes of the pieces means that there's very small chance of false fits. There's a little bit of puzzle dust but not too bad for a 4,000 piece puzzle and nowhere near as much as in a Ravensburger puzzle. I would say that the pieces are just a touch thinner than perhaps a Ravensburger, but again, still good decent thickness on the pieces. And there's some variety in the size of the pieces as well. So the bigger pieces in this puzzle are more kind of like a standard size of piece, but then you've also got smaller ones. So that's a little different, but it's in no way a bad thing, just an observation really. It also holds together really well. There are no issues with crumbliness at all, and that's a big plus in my book. Overall, I'm really loving Bluebird as a brand. In terms of difficulty, this puzzle is not too hard. And to be honest, it's so immersive that I just didn't even, I just forgot about considerations like that and I just completely got lost in it. But I haven't found it to be frustratingly challenging, which is good. So in terms of what's left for part the part two video, we're really looking at all these foreground areas now on the puzzle. And um, there's a lot going on down here in front of the tent. I'm really looking forward to building the bears, this polar bear in the middle, and also the pandas in the bottom right corner. Can't wait to do those, they just look so cute. In this first half, my favorite bit has been the elephant. I just think the elephant is magnificent. <laughs> That's really all I have to say about the puzzle just now. As always, if you have any further questions or you just want to make a comment, then please feel free to leave a comment down below. I love chatting to you all there. If you liked the video, then please do leave a like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please consider subscribing. And if you hit that notification bell as well, then you'll know as soon as my new videos go up, including part two of this puzzle, which will be coming up very soon. And lastly, please consider my membership options for the channel. Again, there are links in the description below if you would like to join Vicky Makes and Builds as a member or as a patron. And thank you again to all of the members that have already signed up. For now though, I shall say goodbye, happy puzzling, and I will see you all next time. Bye.